talk to us about demand. I mean, what has demand been like? Are people still buying sneakers, even though we're all sheltering in place and we're in a recession and, you know, people just yeah. don't have the discretionary income that they once had? I tell you this, demand and consumers and gates of our brands, I can show you many different signals around the world that are as strong or stronger than they were prior to COVID-19. The real test will be over time when everything's open, so all of our partners are open, all of our retail stores are open, and it's been for quite some time where consumers are kind of out of being out of shelter. That'll give us a real sense for if there's been any shifts in demand. But I will tell you this, we were strong going into COVID-19, and we're feeling really good about the signals that we've seen thus far when we've opened our markets back up. Now, we're also in the middle of an urgent social crisis with the new momentum behind the Black Lives Matter movement. And as one of the too few African-American CEOs in this country, how have you been experiencing this? Yeah, you know, that, that's a great question. I mean, first of all, you know, if, as you think about our brand, we like to think of our brand as it, it's, it's, it's really a democratic brand, a brand of all people. And so we call it current versus the brand of youth. And so what's clear to us is that youth progress can't happen without black progress. And so Black Lives Matter was relevant to us well before the current, you know, um, focus on, you know, black lives in the last 60 to 90 days. So on June 5th, we announced a commitment to the black community, both inside and outside the community, outside the walls of our building. I don't know if you read that Nike, Jordan, as well as Converse committed $40 million over the next four years that are gonna be going to things like the NAACP Legal Defense Fund and Equal Justice Initiative and many, many, many other initiatives. But what we really put up is a mirror to ourselves to say, what are we gonna do internally to always advance our culture? As I like to say, the gap between what we wanna be and where we are, how do we close that, that, that gap? And so that we said it starts with us. And that means like, what do we do to make sure we're being more inclusive, creating more belonging environment, improving representation and driving more equity for our black teammates at all levels starting with myself and then externally um, continuing to focus on um, black creative designers athletes and businesses so they can be a part of our ecosystem um, working with nike and jordan to make sure we're investing the 40 million plus in the right organizations that focus on social justice driving education combating racial inequality and then um, driving education across our, our business system. I'd say the biggest learning for me, Emily, is that um, you know, it, it's a couple steps we've taken as a people first approach. One, we've said, you know, how do we make sure that we meet people where they are, regardless of background? Because as leaders, we can no longer say that what's going on outside the building doesn't affect us inside the building. So really helping my, you know, 100 or so executives around the world say you don't have a choice to be involved. Then second, once having that conversation, how do you educate yourself by not just leveraging the one or two or five people of color, but doing the work outside of that so that you're educated? And then three, how do you drive credibility to make sure that you're taking the steps every day to drive representation, inclusion, and belonging in our organization? And so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not only on our radar, it's a critical metric for me as CEO, but this is something that, as our leadership team says, you can't be in the middle. You either have to actively engage or you're, you're really supporting the status quo, which is unacceptable. Absolutely. I believe the research now shows that people feel the most different at work. They don't feel different at home in their families, in their communities, and it's at work that those differences are exacerbated, which is why we do need to talk about this in the workplace. Um, how optimistic are you that what's happening right now will lead to real change? Or will, I, you know, I'm will actually, we get I, back to the status quo? You know, I'm, I'm gonna tell you this, I'm very optimistic. I actually was on a call with another executive, a CEO of another company right before this one. And I just said, this is just different. I just, the amount of people, it, it's far from, I call it Pollyannish that it's perfect. But the amount of people that I would say that said that I don't contribute to um, racial injustice, let's just say that they believe that, that they really have seen that if they don't actively push up against it, that they're somehow contributing to it. And I've not seen that ever in my lifetime. And um, so I'm very optimistic that the ball is going to move progressively in the right direction. 